Thing. So now that we've got all this tech, it's time to talk about how R might make use of this. So for that, I'll hand you to the next phase, which was Sebastian Schroeder. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No Thank you. Wow. Thank God there's only 20 of you, otherwise I'd be nervous. <laughs> right. Well, Thanks for having me. I'm here on behalf of the Planet Content team, and we're very excited to finally show you some of the things we've been working on. Um, as you've just seen from Will and Ali, the system keeps growing, both complexity and capability, so our libraries have to grow alongside it. Wait, should I click? No. Um, no, I should click. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So, our goal of the content is to provide our goal is to provide the content that the system needs to populate every corner of every planet with realistic environments. And this content is what this phase of Genesis is all about: emergent biomes. For our first example of today, it's almost a shame Will left because like, it's about moisture. But let's look at very high moisture and medium to high temperature. Thanks, that did look really good. So, for swamps, we obviously made vegetation that feels at home in or near water. But before we dive in, allow me to give you a quick primer on our approach to authoring plants. Most species can survive in a fairly wide range of climate conditions, but will only thrive if the conditions are ideal. To support this concept, we author our vegetation assets to describe the full growth cycle of a species. If the conditions aren't ideal, they may not grow at the full maturity or look their best, but the species can still exist. So let's have a closer look. For the water's edge, we made plants like this Alternatera and the iris. We also need the aquatic ones to float on the water surface, like the water lily or the pickerel weed. This willow and the one after, a Chinese tallow tree, while comfortable near water, we can also use to replace some of the more aged assets used to seeing elsewhere in the game. The last one, it's, it's taking a bit longer now, but um, the last one, I'm going to wait. The last one you may not see used much in other biomes, but it's a very iconic one for the swamp, the bald cypress. So another feature we need for make a swamp experience a proper one is water interaction. Over the last year or two, a lot of work has gone into improving the way our water reacts and renders. So naturally, we wanted to make a biome that highlights those advances. Let's have a brief look at what it's like being inside the swamp. As you walk or swim through the water, you may come across obstacles like logs or debris floating on the surface. They will react to the player character and can be pushed out of the way. We were also pleasantly surprised when we first saw 
how the water simulation systemically affects assets floating on the water surface, making for some really immersive moments. Now, before I get to our second use case of the day, a quick disclaimer. Obviously, all the things you're seeing here today we're still actively working on, but this one in particular, it's a bit early in the process. So let's have a look at extreme oxygen density next. With the data saying we should have high rainfall and sunlight year-round, it's the perfect condition for our next biome to appear. Considering everything you've just seen is still very much work in progress, the Gameplay Capture team really did a great job showing our work in the best possible light. With Jungles, we wanted to explore the concept of vertical stratification, as they are the prime example for that. What it means is that you have horizontal layers of microbiomes defined by the, uh, defined by the species that thrives with the amount of sunlight and rain that still reaches there. The floor, herb and brush layer, we could almost do before, obviously missing the density. But now we also have the option to add variation to the tree layer by dynamically spawning epiphytes like lianas, orchids, or bromeliads attached to trunks and canopies of other assets. With this and improved density is what will finally allow us to make convincing jungles. And the best part is we don't even need a lot of different species to create what we refer to as a canvas of a biome. The idea being that we can vary what kind of forest you're in by adding or replacing the plants that visually stand out the most. Now, to get us started on our certification, we made epiphytes like the epiprenum and the spromeliad, including a pot version for your hab, then obviously you need jungles for, uh, lianas for a jungle. And we also made the griots, which add character to the herb and tree layer. For tall trees, we decided on a fairly generic rubber tree, as its different growth stages serve as a nice foundation for all height levels. And that's pretty much it, what we need to make a pretty good base for jungle. Now, for our third and last use case, let's pretend the data indicates regular rainfall and moderate temperatures. This climate would support a lot of different forests, but we also wanted to use this opportunity to explore extreme scale. And it's just really cool.
Now, for this one, we first looked at the different redwood biomes on Earth and tried to analyze what the most defining species of them are. With this understanding, we then decided on the following plants to allow for a fairly universal redwood forest that will allow us, that will easily support variation across continents and planets. A fairly common family of species for the ground levels of all redwoods are ferns, in our case, the salt fern. We also made a huckleberry variant to provide some visual density for the shrub layer. To add some Jurassic vibes, we made tree ferns, as they can be found in New Zealand's redwood forests. The most important one, though, are obviously sequoias, and they ended up being one of our most complex sets yet. As it turns out, they can grow to be fairly ridiculous in size. It keeps going. Now, one thing our game's foliage is sadly, sorely missing is the ability to properly react to what's happening around it. The goal here is to unify all forces from all sources. Sorry for the horrible rhyme. Um, all sources from all, all forces from all sources: wind, characters and creatures, ships, explosions, and whatever else, and have the vegetation behave accordingly. Now, as part of our tech improvements, we will be implementing a GPU-based simulation that's fit for our game scale. For now, we've set up the ferns with our existing CPU-based one to better visualize what it will feel like to walk amongst those giants. Also, with the biomes on our planets now being defined by where an individual object wants to appear, you can expect a lot more happy accidents by having species invade different biomes, um, making for some unique locations, hopefully, surely. Now, before I get to disappear off stage, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody involved, especially my team in Frankfurt for doing such amazing work and being all around great people. And also to all of you guys, I really hope you have a fantastic CitizenCon. This concludes this phase of Genesis.